The mountain pygmy possum, such an emblematic species of all that you can't see in nature. You know, it's this species that lives under the rocks and nobody really gets to see it or know that it's there, but it's there. It's this beautiful, cute little creature. It's a threatened species that's being impacted by climate change and we can do all these things um, to help make it, uh, its population more resilient. However, there is a chance that it still may not persist. You know, it's nice to know that we're giving it its best chance. You know, a mountain pygmy possum has that cute factor, but they are tenacious and they've hung on and they've adapted to an environment that is uh, extremely unforgiving. My name's Dean Hines and I'm a, a wildlife biologist. Even though mountain pygmy possums are my, I guess, expertise, most of the focus of this work that I do is, is really about conservation and trying to ensure that, you know, we have some of these animals persisting for a long time. How populations work, whether they're declining, what sort of management interventions that we can maybe look at to try and help these species up in the Alps. The mountain pygmy possum is basically on the mountain tops around Mount Kosciuszko and throughout the, the Victorian Alps. Usually the females are living high up in the boulder fields which typically is where you get higher numbers of bogon moths and so it makes sense the females have their home ranges in those areas so they can raise their young uh, quite rapidly over the short, I guess, alpine summer. I first started working on mountain pygmy possums in the early 1990s, and it was really part of a university field trip where I met one of the real founders of mountain pygmy possum research, a guy called Ian Manza. And I guess his work in Mount Hotham was really important because he started to describe the habitat of where the animals live, but he also discovered you know, this uh, segregation of the sexes and males having to move up to meet with the, the females. So he was the, I guess, the first biologist to really put forward using tunnels under roads to try and link females with the males. So I'm standing here at the possum tunnel or the rock tunnel down at Little Higginbotham. It has rock keening around the back that extends back up the road batter. And then directly underneath this here is two big concrete culverts. In each of the manholes at this end, there's actually a microchip reader. And then at the other end of the tunnel, there's two more microchips readers. So Dean's monitoring it. Um, Hotham at this little Higgin, Higginbotham site is a bit different from all of his other sites. So due to our tunnel, it also includes microchipping mountain pygmy possums. Mm. So along with the genetic sample that Dean takes, he also microchips the possums and that enables us to register when a possum passes through the tunnel, whether it be up or down. We have had how many individuals now, Avia? 30 individuals. 30 different individuals yeah. using the tunnel with almost daily records. Yeah. They move through the tunnel very quickly. We found from one end of the microchip readers to the other, it takes a possum about 15 seconds to cross over all those rocks. And we've also found that the tunnel is incredibly popular with the female population, which is something that we weren't expecting. We definitely expected males to be moving up to where we thought the prime habitat were for females. But it seems like the girls like to get out and about. <laughs> The current pygmy possum program that we're um, delivering across the Bogong High Plains is camera monitoring and fox baiting program. 
The food source across the alpine landscape is very abundant throughout the summer months, but on the shoulder periods of the spring and the autumn is not as uh, available and therefore predators throughout the landscape during those times are desperate for whatever food source they can get. When that period is occurring, it's also when the puma possums are waking up and they're needing to get some food and into them because they've been asleep for seven months and there's a lot of movement across the landscape during these periods of the year. There's a much more increased opportunity for the fox to find the pimi possum and to chase the pimi possum and continue to persist until they're able to catch it. One of the key aspects of working with threatened species is the ability to have a handle on what's happening with the population. The five-year funding that we've been able to utilise from the Australian Government for this particular project has allowed us to really set up a comprehensive and expansive monitoring process. So we've actually got a continual five-year period where we're collecting data whilst we've been implementing management actions that are addressing threatening processes. It's imperative that we provide some sort of measure and understanding of the trajectory of the population. So are we doing the right thing in terms of the recovery for this species? Are we implementing the right recovery actions with the funding that's available? And certainly you know, this five-year program is currently addressing that.